Hi, Hi guys. guys, welcome, welcome to, to Earn Electronics, Electronics Repair. Repair. And Detlef was hidden by the PCB for far too long. So <laughs> here's Detlef with me today, and <laughs> you can see this is a sponsored video Whee! by PCB Way. Whee! And we have some PCBs. So let's get straight to the point and show you what we have today. And in the box are the PCBs themselves. So these were manufactured by PCBWay.com. We have five of them, so when you order, you can have a set of five. These are very inexpensive, actually, and this is a great way to prototype your product. And this is a prototype. These look very different from the PCBs you've seen Detlef and myself make. And these were actually designed by a guy named Thomas. He goes by the name of Chained Unicorn, and he used some mythical software called Fritzing. Which we didn't actually know still existed, is that right, Detlef? Well, I never knew that Fritzing was used for layout because I only knew this for drawing simple schematics, but obviously you can use Fritzing for schematic, for layouts. But uh, yeah, the first thing I saw it when I saw this, and sorry, Thomas, when this comes around wrong, I thought, okay, let's please redesign this. <laughs> well, in actual fact, we don't necessarily need to straight away because Thomas is now as he said to me, I want to make this much smaller. He's now made an SMD version of this, which he says is running. I haven't asked him or I haven't seen the PCBs yet. So Thomas, join in the conversation here. Did you use fritzing again for your new layout? So this is the device and I've actually built one. As I say, here is one we prepared earlier. And by the magic of television, there it is. So this is a constructed one. I've actually just fixed the switches onto here just to make it easy. And these wires you see here go off to the MOSFETs you can test. This is for N channel and P channel. Coffee warmer. Yes, <laughs> the coffee warmer. So you may see this. Now, this MOSFET on heat sink, so this is IRFP240, is one I was testing previously on my basic manual version of the MOSFET tester. And I was passing a lot of current through these 10 amps and they were getting warm. And I was actually suspending this into a little plastic tub full of water, not the connections, just the MOSFET to keep it cool. So that's the same one. You've seen this before, but this tester works differently. So this is actually automated. You can see at the moment, we have a little screen on the front. So let us show you how this tester actually works. So this tester runs from a 10 volt supply. You can actually put a little voltage regulator module on here so you can use a higher voltage. But I've just connected this directly to my bench power supply for now, which is actually sitting behind it. In fact, you can see it there Ooh, in the shot. So you can see 10 volt supply. If I plug the power lead in. And once we power up, it says ready and we simply press the button. So we hit the button. And we have 173 milliohms. Yep, something like that. Yep. yep. I can actually tell you guys it actually has 175 milliohms. So that's telling us the RDS on and it's telling us the gate threshold 1.68 volts. If we look at the actual specification for this MOSFET, we'll actually see that the gate threshold should be between two and four. So this is actually telling us lower mm, okay. so than is, it should yeah. be, yeah? But as we said, guys, this is a revision zero. So I'm gonna measure this on my basic tester, the one I demonstrated the other day with the same MOSFET. And let's see what the basic tester tells us. And here we have the same MOSFET on the basic tester. I showed how to work this on the previous video, guys. So I'll just link that to this one. This version is complete now this is ready to build if you want to order one of these so what i have here i have the voltmeter on volts range and it's connected directly to the mosfet on these clips we'll come to that a little bit later but to use this one what we do is we turn the power up on the power supply until the led lights up you see it's on it's off yeah the reading on here doesn't mean anything at the moment. We look at the reading on here and we want to see at what voltage on the power supply it turns on, which is just there. Yeah, you can see it just comes on here. And if we take this reading and divide it by two, the reasons are explained on the other video, that is the gate threshold voltage. So it's 3.5, 3.7. 
So that's saying 3.7. The data sheet says between two and four, so that is within spec. This would be in spec indeed. Yeah, that's within spec. Now we're gonna test this at one amp. So what we do is we just turn this fully up, the current limit set to one amp, so it'll just go to one amp. Mm -hmm. And the voltage across the drain and source at one amp, ohms equals volts, milliohms equals millivolts. So the reading on the meter is the RDS in ohms. Here we go. And it's 1.13. Sorry, 0 0.113, yeah? Mm -hmm. So 0 0.113 of an ohm, and the spec is 0.18. Now oh, perfect. So the other one was reading about 0 0.175, just within spec. This shows well within spec, so be mm -hmm. a bit different, yeah? Now we're just going to test this at 10 amps. I'll show you what happens. This would have been my question, because the data sheet tells, tells you a higher current for, yes. for measuring these, right? Yes, for this particular MOSFET, it says 12 amps. Mm, okay. So... I'm now going to measure this at 10 amps and see if we get a different mm. reading. So I've now set the switch to 10 amps, so we're going to do the same test again and check the RDS on at 10 amps. Now this MOSFET will warm up quite quickly, so we need to take the reading quite quickly if we watch on the meter. The other thing we need to note is that because there's now 10 amps going through the MOSFET, the reading in volts doesn't equal ohms anymore, you have to divide it by 10. Oh, okay, of course, okay. it's 10 amps now. Yeah. yeah, 10 amps now. So whatever we see on here, we need to divide by 10. Here we go. And we see 1.3, 1.4, yeah? Mm -hmm. Just go again, because I don't want to get too hot, otherwise the reading will change. 1.4, okay? Yeah, 1.4 is the start, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so the RDS on now is 0 0.14. So it's actually gone up a little of bit. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. At 10 amps. So you can see, guys, that the readings I'm getting, I'll just show you the data sheet, or within spec, but the reading I got off the other tester was only on the edge of spec, and for some reason, the gate threshold voltage was out of spec. Here's the data sheet, and the things we're interested in, in particular, is RDS on, 0.18. Okay, so the automated tester gave us about uh, 0.17, 0.175. Just within spec, my tester, the manual one, 0 0.11, well within spec. And I couldn't test on the automated tester at 10 amps, but you notice it's actually increased. So that would suggest that the automated tester at 10 amps would be out of spec. True. Yeah. yeah. But isn't this, this is not linear, right? No, and there's also a good reason why. So the other thing just showing you guys on this specification here, gate threshold voltage between two and four. So the automated tester was telling us 1.54, which is below spec. So again, out of spec. The manual tester was saying 3.6. True. Yeah. Well within spec. That would be in spec, indeed. Yeah. So the manual tester definitely works and reads within spec. Because we know these are some good MOSFETs. And it also tells us here that the RDS on, 0.18 is the maximum. We have less than that. And it's measured with 10 volts on the gate, which both testers are doing. And in this case, the current of 12 amps. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as we just showed you, if you increase the current, the RDS on goes up a little bit. Mm -hmm. In addition to this, revision zero giving incorrect readings. Another thing you probably noticed from that demonstration, I was testing that MOSFET at 10 amps for very short periods of time. And it was on a heat sink. This thing was getting warm. It's still warm, and this is about five minutes after you were doing the testing. So exactly. Yeah. And as the MOSFET was warming up, the RDS on was increasing. It was going up. So you have to take a reading quickly. Now, those data sheets actually specify that they don't continuously pass 10 or 12 amps through the MOSFET, which I'm doing. It tests for like so many milliseconds like a pulse okay and that's what this can do that's the great thing about this design now why were we reading rds on higher with this than the other one i have a very good reason for that the mosfet is on the end of these wires through a connector through some more wires soldered to the pcb the adc this is the analog to digital converter here this is measuring the voltage that it sees across here through a voltage divider and then giving that value digital, digitally to the micro. micro, which is then displaying it on here. So the ADC is measuring the voltage somewhere here. 
but you need to measure the voltage on the end of the lead otherwise you have the resistance of these wires and we're talking milliohms guys so uh, yeah the resistance of the wires matters here absolutely so that matters and it matters a lot more at 10 amps mm -hmm. the more you increase the current the more it matters so one thing i think we would need to do to this is to get a connection somewhere very close to the ADC mm -hmm. with some clips like the ones I was using so we can clip directly onto the MOSFET. Just like a Kelvin probe. Yeah, exactly like mm -hmm. a Kelvin probe. So the current flows this way, the voltage measurement is on the other wires and then it eliminates the resistance of these. Yep. It's not relevant because the power supply is a constant current. So the power supply will always give 10 amps. The, it will itself compensate for the resistance of the wires, okay? So that's the first thing with this. Why is it reading the wrong gate threshold voltage that I actually don't know? That's something we need to investigate. Mm -hmm. The next thing is this can only test at one amp. And as we could see, the data sheet specified in our case 12 amps. And if you measure the RDS on at a lower current, you get a lower reading. So this will not help you to detect fake MOSFETs exactly. No. You need to drive them at the current specified in the data sheet. In the previous video, you see I had a MOSFET that was tested according to the data sheet at 7.2 amps. Now you can use a 10 amp bench power supply like I'm using, but I still can't get 12. Do I need a 20 amp bench power supply to be able to test all of these? How much is a thing <laughs> going to cost? Okay, so I came up with an idea and Detlef developed this with me and we decided, first thing, what is the easiest way to get a high current 10, 20 amp supply? We only need 12 volts, that's all we need. How? ATX power supply. So that is a way cheaply to get a very high current. And the ATX is actually ideal because the ATX power supply has standby voltage. Yep. Yeah. So we can power a CPU from the standby voltage of a uh, ATX supply. And yeah. the ATX power supply has the green wire, which is the power on signal, which you take to ground, which means our controller can switch on the ATX power supply. Yeah. So this doesn't need to stay on all the time. Yeah, only when it does a test. And better still, an ATX power mm -hmm. supply on the gray wire has a power good signal. So our controller can now effectively, when you press the start button, switch on the ATX power supply, wait till the power goes there so we know the thing is up and running, and then run its test at. Doing its measurements, switch off the thing. Yeah. Yes, and measure its test at what current? Well, you can't set the current on an ATX power supply, but what you can do is replace these resistors with a dynamic or active load. Mm -hmm. And an active load can be set to whatever current you want. Mm, indeed. And not only that, but the microcontroller can control the active load and say to the active load, right, I want to set you at 7.2 amps or 10 amps or whatever you want mm -hmm. to test. Or even better still, it could test at a whole range of different currents. <laughs> yep. From, like curve. from milliamps up to the maximum you set. And you can get a curve. Yeah, and since we're doing this in milliseconds, there's no way that will heat up so far. No, exactly, exactly. And we know how to get around the resistance of these mm -hmm. leads. So that then brings us to the next thing we thought we should do with this. If we can plot curves with this and make an automated test at very high currents, and you also need to be able to enter in the maximum current. So you look at the data sheet, say, this is the current maximum I want to test, and it will do it for you. Then this display isn't really up to the job. No, this is way too small, and you probably need a rotary encoder to enter everything. Yeah, and this will be a pain in the neck to do because fiddling around with the thing. Exactly, it's probably doable, but it wouldn't be nice. No, but but <laughs> this is where Detlef came in. Detlef, what do we have that's nice? <laughs> well, we wanted bigger displays, so we got bigger displays. Ah, oh, what are those? Ding, ding. Um, okay, these are big. Let's have a look are, at them. These are big, so... Um, this is one of the displays. This is the other. Oh, they look quite different. They look they totally are, different. They are different because it's different technologies. The, the bigger one is a TFT display with 800 by 480. Okay. And the little one is a e-paper display. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. you maybe know e-paper displays from your Amazon Kindle, e-book yeah. reader thingamajigs. And uh, we weren't sure which one would be the better choice for the project. So we got both of them. 
Okay, so we have two displays here. And these, by the way, guys, are not just displays. So they have built-in controls, interface. There's CPU on board. There's yep. a CPU on board. This one's a touchscreen. This is a touchscreen, yep. Okay, so touchscreen and there's a CPU on board. So yep. the CPU in here, what, ESP or something? Yep, this is one of the ESPs. Uh, to answer this question first, uh, you can't do this with a regular Arduino Uno or Nano. Uh, these need big CPUs. Uh, big CPUs, you know? Yeah, <laughs> but those big CPUs in here have various uh, GPIOs, general purpose IO pins, and that CPU can easily do the job of the Arduino. Absolutely, and uh, we, choose, we chosen this display for GPIO, so there are lines out there, so we only have to use the, we can use the thing as a basic module, and from there on we have only a few lines going through the, mm. to the tester To, to the tester, yeah. okay. So, Next thing with this then, guys, and Thomas helping with this as well, is myself and Tom, hopefully you as well, will work on the active load mm -hmm. to replace the resistors and an active load that can be controlled by the processor. Mm -hmm. And we'll work on the idea of the Kelvin probe so we can get an accurate reading mm -hmm. on the ADC of what's happening at the end of these wires. And Detlef, you're going to have a look at this side of it, yeah? <laughs> yeah, we'll need to decide which, which one we want to use. Okay, so what we're going to do, guys, we're going to end this video here. You can mm -hmm. see where we're going. And we'll make another video about these displays because I'm sure a lot of you guys will be very, very interested to see what we have here. And just mention, these things are not expensive. 20 no, odd no, dollars not, or something. Not 30 euros. Yeah. Yep, so below 30 euros. Yep. Yeah. So these are a very interesting yeah. thing. Okay, guys, so that's where we are with this project. Hope you like that update plenty going on i think we're going to end up here with a unique piece of test equipment that mm. is something you can't buy maybe for tens of thousands of dollars if you want some professional kind of equipment for plotting characteristics of mosfets but let's see how we can do on a basic level with this yeah okay okay so thanks for watching guys thanks once again to pcb way for sponsoring this video get into the comments below we'd love to hear from you and one more thing to say Ciao for now. now.